Hi, in this video, we are going to talk about data store for an OTT platform like Netflix. There will be a requirement for any video streaming applications to store insane amount of data. In this video, we are going to analyze and estimate what are the different kind of data an OTT platform or a video streaming platform like Netflix can use to store huge volume of data related to both video and its customers. Now let's just jump into this analysis. What are the type of data an OTT platform like Netflix can store? First category is videos. The second category is user metadata. And the third category is videos metadata. So the difference between videos and videos metadata is the first category is the video content itself. And the third category is the metadata related to videos, the details related to videos like descriptions, reviews, ratings. So these are some of the metadata that we have about videos. Before we jump into analysis, let's try to estimate the volume of users and the volume of streaming content in Netflix. First, let's talk about videos. How many videos does Netflix has? Can we make an estimation? Based on my usage with Netflix, I think Netflix should be having around 20k videos. This includes TV shows, shorter movies, longer movies, everything. So number of videos is going to be 20k. What is the average duration of each of the video? As I told you earlier, earlier there could be a short video or a movie of a duration of 2.5 hours or a movie of duration of 1 hour. So let's arrive to a mean value of 1.5 hours duration for each video. Okay. Now let's talk about user base for Netflix. I think Netflix user, ba user base could be around 200 million users. Yeah, easily. Most of the OTT platforms have their presence of across globe. So easily most of the OTT platform will have an user base of around 200 million. Okay, now we are done with our assumptions. Let's proceed forward to do our actual analysis on how much data we are going to store in each of these categories. And, and what kind of data store can be used for storing these categories. First, let's start our analysis with videos. What are the type of videos we have in Netflix? Definitely, we would have a video of standard quality. Next, we would have high definition videos. As we already assumed or estimated that the duration of each of the video is 1.5 hours. Now, let's find out, try to estimate the size of the content that is going to play for 1.5 hours with standard video quality and HD video quality. With my experience, I will say that a video of standard quality will occupy memory space of around 5 GB if it's going to play for 1.5 hours. And for high definition quality, it should be around 15 GB for 1.5 hours. I hope this is a fair estimation. Now let's find out the memory that is going to be used to store this kind of videos. As we already assumed, the total number of videos in Netflix would be 20k. So we have to multiply 20k into 20 GB by summing up standard and HD quality videos, which gives 400,000 GB. On converting this into TB, it will be 400 TB. So we have to store 400 TB of video content to run a OTT platform like Netflix. Amazing. Somehow I had a thought that uh, OTT platform will be storing more content, but we ended up calculating it to 400 TB. We have two options here. Either we can go for a NoSQL database or we can store it in cloud storage like AWS S3 or GCP. So we can store this either in AWS or we can store this in Google. I would recommend that we can go with cloud storage because initially I had some thought like uh, the volume of data stored by an OTT platform would be huge. So I had a thought that we can go for a NoSQL database, maybe an Oracle, a large object interface for uh, storing and retrieving the video content. But considering the volume of data, I think we can go for cloud storage, AWS S3, and we can replicate this across multiple regions so that the latency will be minimal across regions. This gives us an edge in costing and everything. And of course, for any OTT platform, the latency should be very minimal for streaming especially, because that is the bread and butter of an OTT platform. And if we have that in S3, and if we replicate it across regions, of course, latency will be minimal while streaming. 
now let's get into the second part of our data which is user metadata so so what kind of user metadata we have to store to find this let's think through what kind of user data netflix will netflix will be storing in its data store what kind of user data netflix is showing to me when i use the service netflix will display whether the video has been already watched or not of course and the history of watched videos apart from this we will be storing user details like user profile user name user password billing address so these are some other details that we have to store about user that comes under third category and the fourth category is users wish list users wish list and likes user may hit like button uh, when he likes a movie so those details has to be persisted and also user might add a movie to watch it later list and those details should also be maintained for each and every user so considering these categories what is the size of data we are going to store per user consider a user is watching three movies per week so in a year we have around 51 weeks and so an user is going to watch 150 movies in a year the average user life um, can be kept as 10 years so in 10 years an user is going to watch around 1500 videos so all this data should be stored as history so i will say we can assume 100 bytes of data for one movie so for a user we are going to store 150000 bytes of data so which is 150 kb so per so per user we are going to store user metadata of size 150 kb we have around 200 million users so 200 million into 150 let's eliminate these three zeros for converting kb to mb and let's eliminate these three zeros for converting mb to gb let's eliminate these three zeros for converting gb to tb so we are going to store 30 tb data for for persisting user metadata what kind of storage can we use for this there are two options we have once again the first option is nosql db like mongodb and the second option is some relational database how I will choose between MongoDB and Relational Database. It's going to be based on how I'm going to use this user metadata. If I'm going to do some analytics or background jobs, that's going to repeatedly read the user metadata and build some analytics to give user recommendation, then I would suggest going with NoSQL. And if it is not, if it is not the case, I will suggest going for Relational Database. One main advantage of going with NoSQL is NoSQL can scale at a greater extent compared to relational database. These days, in all business, one important factor is implementing AI or machine learning to study user behavior and user data and improve user engagement. In case of OTT platform, we can run our analytics in the background for studying the user behavior like which movie an user is watching frequently and and what movie the user will be interested to watch in future based on this we can suggest user with recommended movies or videos so to do this or scale this operation i would suggest we can go for nosql db the next type of data that we have is video metadata what are the data we are going to store as part of video metadata first one is video descriptions video reviews likes unlikes video title these are some of the data that we will be storing as part of video metadata i will say these are static data this these data are not going to change frequently of course likes and unlikes will change reviews will get updated but some parts of this data are static like video description and title i would suggest we can go for some key value store for this also latency should be lesser while we retrieve these kind of data so i would say we can go for redis the main advantage we get by using redis data stores data store is the latency would be lesser because it's an in-memory database the second option is if you don't care about latency then i would suggest postgres both in redis and postgres sql data will be persisted but if you care more about latency then go for redis key value store or if you are not that much concerned with latency in fetching video metadata then we can go for postgres in postgres sql we have better data structures 
to store our data that will help to store our video metadata i think now you got a broad understanding on how we can store our data for a ott platform and also you know what are the different kind of data that we have to store and the choice of data stores that are available for us to store the data related to video user and metadata and let's meet in my next video thank you